pleasure to introduce to you tonight uh, Lisa Newell, publisher and co-owner of the Guthrie's News and the Splash Magazine, and she has all of these things out on display for you to see. She and Vicki Papajohn co-founded the newspaper back in 2001 after the Sentinel folded. But I have to tell you, Lisa, you'd be surprised at the old citizens. They still call the paper the Sentinel. They'll say, I didn't get the Sentinel this month. So anyway, Lisa has a bachelor's degree in journalism from the University of Florida, and she is a graduate of Guthrie's High School. I didn't know this. She's a native Texan. I just thought she was a native Guthriesian. But she moved to Guthrie's in 1977, where she met her husband to be, Bob. And Lisa and Bob have two adult children. So Lisa is wife to Bob, mom to Natalie and Henry, and employer to Betty Allen. <laughs> Isn't that great? So we, um, and also back, remember when Jaws 2 was made here in this area? Yeah, yeah. Our Lisa was uh, on the beach, one of those beautiful <laughs> girls on the beach. She was. So look for her next time you see Jaws 2. Okay. Anyway, I introduce to you my friend, Lisa. Thank you so much. And if you think that I am Betty's boss, <laughs> I don't think it's possible to control Betty. But we love her so much. She does a great job for us. And the neat thing, Lisa, is like in our scratch I mean, 99.9% is everything from the Gulf Breeze News. That's great. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. You know, one time I came to a Gulf Breeze uh, Historical Society meeting, and I came and I sat on the front row. And as soon as I sat down, I realized that the program was going to be about archiving. <laughs> and I thought, oh, would it be impossible for me to get up and leave? And I determined that I couldn't leave uh, without being rude. And I stayed and listened, and it was absolutely so fascinating. And I'm so glad that I heard it. It was wonderful, and lots of good thought went into it. And really interesting speaker. So I. Hope I don't disappoint tonight. Is that ready? Now? Yeah, it's ready. Yeah, you had to hold it. Is that working? Yep. There's a little switch on there. I wanted to get you to stand. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh James. Let's get James a round of applause. Thank you. Who's that? Oh, you have. Thank you. Is that okay? Okay. Did you switch the hands? I have had the pleasure. Okay, I have to speak. <laughs> I have had the pleasure of publishing Gulf Breeze News since 2001. Before that, I did sell advertising for the Sentinel for five years, and that was really, really fun. I loved it, and that's why when they decided to close the Sentinel, we decided we have to have a newspaper. This community really deserves a newspaper. We knew that we were more than just a suburb of Pensacola. We couldn't just be melded together like Ferry Pass and everything else. We're different. We have a different county. We have different character. We have a, a just a, just Gulf Breeze is just unique. So we thought we would start a newspaper, and we were told it will never work. <laughs> it will never work. You are going to go bankrupt, and uh, we almost have a few times. <laughs> so far, we're still hanging in there. I thought I would tell you first of all who is Gulf Breeze News. Who who is the people? Who are the people who are behind Gulf Breeze News? Our office manager is Laura Jones, and she handles literally thousands of subscribers, hundreds of advertisers. She does accounts payable. She does accounts receivable, human resources, procurement, and she can even make coffee. You know, we're located. We're we're locally owned, so we don't have Gannett behind us or a big company behind us. We're the global headquarters right here in Gulf Breeze. Our reporter is Glenda Caudle. A lot of you may know her. She goes to all the city council meetings. She's also the editor of Splash. She moved here from Tennessee where she has got a ton of experience and she is a wonderful writer and she also is a novelist and has a lot of other uh, talents. Uh, Jason Thompson. How many of you know Jason Thompson? I think Jason Thompson is more famous than the Gulf Breeze News and he has been there for 16 years. So we've, we've only been in business for 17 years and he has been there for 16 covers everything. All the kids know Jason. Everybody's, you know, getting their picture in the paper all the time. Literally, he covers every sport from the high school and the Wahoos, too. 
and he is gone all the time. We never see him. We don't know where he is. I, it, I like it that way because I can't keep up with the schedule. Um, Doug Henriquez is our sales rep. He sells advertising for us. A lot of you may know Barbara Henriquez, who is a teacher at the high school. That's his wife. And he is active in the Optimist Club, and so am I. He runs an oratorical contest. I'm sure a lot of you know him. Uh, Barbara Crossland, she is our art director. She's worked for Gannett, Pensacola News Journal, for 27 years. She does all the designing of the ads. She creates illustrations. She does those wonderful maps. I love those maps. Uh, she does all the design and layout of Splash Magazine as well. We have a part-time graphic artist uh, named Blaine Fowler. Then my husband is actually employed someplace else, but he does circulation and he does go, he's, so he circulates Splash all over the place and Gulf Breeze News. We are currently uh, hosting an intern from UWF, and there's me, of course. I do a little bit of everything, whatever it needs to be done, vacuum, uh, <laughs> sweep, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, Vicki Papajohn, she is still a partner, but she hasn't worked for the paper for about five years. She's been pursuing other interests. We also have the people who are not on staff, but they're very integral to what we do. One of them is named Betty Allen. Betty Allen covers everything. <laughs> Betty, of course, uh, you know you know her, but she's a doctor. She has her PhD. She's highly overqualified to be a columnist for the Gulf Breeze News, but she does a wonderful job and. You know, covering those things is very important. It's very time consuming. And those of us who work cannot get out to the daytime meetings and things like that. So it's very important. I think that you don't realize what an impact the women's groups and the men's groups have on the community until you see it in the paper and you realize they're raising money, they're funding things, they're bringing us together. They're, they're really the heart and soul of the community. Pam Brennan has worked for us for many years. She covers so many things, it's unbelievable. She covers the uh, Santa Rosa County School, uh, School Board, Santa Rosa County Commission, Santa Rosa Island Authority, Midway Fire Department. She covers, um, you know, she does a lot of schools, she goes, covers a lot of churches, and she is a wonderful asset. And then we have, of course, Jack Kale, who writes a column for us every week, which is a great column, I love to read it. Pastor Jack? Yes, Pastor okay. Jack Kale, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> The role of a newspaper. Okay, I'm, I'm new at this, so. I wanted to let you guys know we are a private business. A lot of people think that the newspaper just comes with the territory, just like water and air and everything else, but actually it is a private business and we do have a lot of expenses. Our printing bill last year was $75,000. Yeah. Plus we have to pay to get it labeled, we have to pay to get those inserts inserted, we have to pay for the internet, we have a mortgage, we have taxes, payroll. Uh, we do use the ARC to help with our labeling and our inserting, and that's a wonderful service. They really help us out a lot. Um, I think the role of a newspaper also is in economic impact. I believe that uh, you know people, before they move to a community, are going to look at the newspaper to see what the character of the community is. A lot of people we have calling in, I'm thinking about moving to the area, I want to see what you're all about, I'd like to subscribe, or they want to read it online so they can just kind of find out if we're high crime, they want to see that kind of thing. And we have a lot of people tell us, I moved here because I read the paper and I thought this community was unbelievable. And, it, and really it is. It is unbelievable. And that's not our doing, that's just us reflecting the community. So another thing about the economic impact is, you know, um, we have a very big traffic problem, in case you have not heard about that. <laughs> and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the businesses say, well, I'm going to locate my business on Highway 98 because According to the, the data, 52,000 cars a day are averaging going through the Gulf Breeze to Tiger Point area. And I believe it's much more in just the Gulf Breeze to Pensacola Beach area. And, but that can be a blessing and it can be a curse. If I'm on my way somewhere, I'm looking into three lanes of traffic. I'm not you know, looking to, to get over and just stop and you know, go browse at a shop. So I feel like it's important that, um, you know, especially during trade season because it's just gridlock, you know. But it is hard to get out of the traffic pattern. But what I feel is important with Gulf Breeze News is that people can advertise to let people know what they have in their store. They can tell them if they have a, if they have a sale. You know, you kind of get an opportunity to, to visit the store without visiting the store and you know that you can make that route. To, I want to go visit the store, make it an intentional visit. So I feel like that's important for a newspaper. Uh, we are online. Uh, we do have breaking news. We do have links to current news on our website. Back uh, in the end of 2017, we began to charge for access to the newspaper 
online because it is our product and we have to make money and um, you know a lot of people were how dare you you know how dare you but I said well, do, do you give away a lot of products for free at your business because this is our livelihood we have to we have to make money or we don't exist but we did get a large increase in subscribers so that was a big blessing of course we also cover the news we are not the first to get the news, the news. You know, if you're at the Pensacola News Journal, you're at a meeting that ends maybe at 9.30 or 10, you've gotta have it on the press by 10.30, you're gonna get just the beginning of what happened. What we can do for you is we can get more of the story, we can digest it, we can talk to the people involved, we can find out a little bit more in depth rather than just covering the story. So I feel that what we have to offer is a little bit better uh, in depth coverage. Also, I feel like the newspaper provides accountability. You know, we do attend all those meetings, and let me tell you, you guys don't, because <laughs> I can tell you, maybe maybe three, four people attend the city council meetings on a regular basis, and that is all. Or people come in and they wait for their particular uh, item, and then they get up and leave. We are there for all of those meetings. Um, we are knowing, we know what is going on. We know uh, where the money is spent, which is very important. We, uh, you know, there's some stories that take years to develop. And we've been covering them for years, so we know the background, so that's important. And we try to bring to light, you know, some of those issues that are going to affect us all. Uh, you know, we also provide a lot of entertainment. Um, you know, there's crosswords. You wouldn't believe one year, uh, it was Christmas time, and we decided that we just were gonna have a very small issue because we had, you know, we had to go to, we wanted to get out of there and go, to, go home for Christmas. So we decided to leave out the crossroad puzzle. Oh, no. oh my goodness, we will never, <laughs> never do that again. I uh, found out that a lot of people just read the newspaper for the crossword puzzle, so it's surprising. But we do have games, we have entertainment, of course we have calendar events, we have birthday club. So we have a lot of things, uh, you know, they're in there. But, you know, the, the main thing is that the Gulf Breeze News really, like any community newspaper, it's just a mirror of the community. We just are a reflection of what's going on. If we're doing well, you know, we, we show it. We have problems. Sometimes we have grief. We connect us in our grief. Uh, we have wins. We have, lo we have losses. Uh, but mainly, Gulf Breeze is very close-knit. Um, we're very family-oriented. We have a lot of kids in this neighbor in this area and that's no accident people moved here because they wanted to provide a great place for their kids to live uh, we've got troubles no doubt every community has trouble but i have also seen a very forgiving community uh, i've seen the community rally around those who've been in trouble and i think that's one of the greatest things about gulf breeze uh, you know we do special sections we just did the gulf breeze celebrates the arts special section last week for the art show we do a progress report every May, so it's coming up. This week, Sunday, we have Open House Sunday, which is where we open, we have all these realtors participate. They put their open houses on the, on the market from the same day from 1 to 4 p.m. so that you can go and visit a lot of different open houses at the same time, and you can register to win a gift basket. Just makes it more fun. Just kind of makes it more fun. Uh, we have a home and garden uh, special. We talk about, you know, kitchens, beds, and baths. Uh, senior living, restaurants, on the water. We publish legal notices, which is important. Um, we also publish the procurement. So if you have something to sell, the county wants to buy it, you can connect with them. We do publish you know, foreclosures, we have classifieds, just all the stuff a regular newspaper has. So we cover the schools and sports, county news, city news, Santa Rosa Island Authority, Midway Fire Department, United Peninsula Association, FDOT, right now with a lot of that's for the bridge, National Park Service, Chambers of Commerce, churches, theater, you know, we're just trying to cover everything, really. Um, now, a lot of people recently have said, you know, the media, you know, the media is terrible, uh, fake news, and it's really hard because if we're, you know, out with people, and they're like, you know, the media, talk about the media, oh, you know, Lisa, I'm sorry, I don't... <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, I really don't think that we apply to that. Um, we can't really be painted with the same brush because we live in this community. We want to stay in this community. Does that mean that we sometimes 
don't, um, sometimes we disagree with what's going on. Sometimes we feel that things need to be told and that's not pleasant. You know, we feel that we have a good rela working relationship with all of our elected officials. But, you know, you also have to be, you have to tell the truth. And sometimes things happen that we think, what are you thinking? But, you know, we can't really give our opinion, but you have to just report what happens, even if they don't want you to. And that has been, that has been a factor. People say, don't put that in the paper. <laughs> and that has happened more than, more than once. But, um, you know, we feel like, number one, you know, there's, we celebrate the good things, we talk about the things that are not so good, and in the end, I think we're better off because we do tell what is going on and keep the, keep the public informed. If any of you ever have to deal with the media, um, you know, people say, oh, don't talk to the media, they'll publish everything. Well, yeah, the media does publish everything. We have to publish something. We can't just publish blank pages. But if you have something that you want to say, sometimes it's not pleasant. Sometimes there's something that is going on that you don't want to be told at this moment. You can always tell the media or us, this is off the record. This is off the record. Let me tell you why. I will tell you at a later date. Or I'm going to give you the background and tell you why I can't tell you. And then I'm expecting you to keep this, you know, uh, confidential. And we do. We keep a lot of things confidential. If a business is coming to town and it's very touchy, we want to make sure that uh, the competitors don't find out about it. That is, some, that is an example of a time when we will keep things quiet. Um, but there's a lot of other times, too, things people say, just not now, I'll tell you later, but this is what, what I can tell you at this point, but don't publish it. And we'll be happy to do that. The worst thing you can do is say no comment. That is a very, um, you know, and if someone, if you ask your child, uh, where were you last night? And they said no comment. <laughs> I think you'd think, I think something's up. And that's the same way with the media, too. So better to just say, let me tell you why I can't tell you, than to say no comment. Of course, times are changing. We have got a lot of different things going on. You might ask yourself, is it really necessary to have a community newspaper? You know, the internet. People say, well, I'm a member of, you know, uh, Next Door Whisper Bay, and I get all the news I need. Okay, I agree. I'm a member of Next Door Whisper Bay or Next Door Your Neighborhood Name, whatever. It's wonderful if someone has lost a pet, <laughs> if a bear has been in your trash. That is great, valuable information. Probably not going to be published in the Gulf Breeze News. It's immediate. It's local, hyper-local. It's wonderful. It's, it's wonderful to have that. But it's also extremely limited. Our world does not end at our driveways. We have to know what is going on. So, and there's also a lot of fake news that comes on these small little uh, uncensored uh, at, and no accountable person watching what they're saying. Someone could say, uh, there's a target coming to the old Del Shants. And that spreads like wildfire. Now that's not true. Somebody just wishes a target would come there, but it's not true. I mean, I wish a target would come there too. <laughs> Saying it does not ha make it happen. So, uh, you know, we have to be careful of that. Those little things, I mean, I love them for a lot for what they do, but you also have to recognize they have limitations. People say, I don't need to advertise. You know, I just use word of mouth. Well, you know, word of mouth is good if they're saying good things. But if they're saying bad things, Word of mouth can be a very bad thing as well. Um, so you really need to control your message if you're a business. You need to let people know, this is, this is my, what I want you to know about my business. So you have to get out ahead of it. You have to control the message. It can definitely help you in case something happens. Um, you know, let's say you have a restaurant that gets shut down by the health department. But you're going to clean it up and you're going to reopen it. How many people are going to know that you cleaned it up and reopened it? They're going to say, I will never, ever, ever eat there again. Even if now it's the cleanest place in town. You have to get out in front of the message. You have to tell people, this is, you know, we've got this going on, this special, this, you know, just try to, just try to make it your own thing. Of course, tons of information all the time that we have in Gulf Breeze News. If you're a taxpayer, 
which I'm sure everyone here is in some manner, we're, we're watching those taxpayer dollars for you. We're holding people accountable. We know right now there's uh, a lot of people are upset because there could possibly be a school coming to the Tiger Point uh, golf course. Some people think that's the greatest thing ever, and some people think, I, you know, I bought land that was golf course front, not school front. They have a right to say that. So by letting them know, hey, there might be a school coming to there, they can let their voices be heard and tell people what they expect about that. We do have challenges. We do have challenges. Um, Gulf Breeze News services an area that if you drew a pin on and then drew a circle all the way around it, a lot of it is water. <laughs> <laughs> And that is a difficult situation to convince advertisers to advertise in Gulf Breeze News. They don't see that Gulf Breeze News is unique, that Gulf Breeze has a high income demographic, that Gulf Breeze has, you know, family oriented, you know, people. They are just looking for mass numbers. That hurts us with, with advertising. And also they say, well, look how close you are to Pensacola. You're just right underneath Pensacola, so I'll just advertise in the Pensacola News Journal and that'll just cover it for me. I don't want to buy two ads, so I'll just buy the Pensacola News Journal. That hurts us. That hurts us a lot. But I do, I maintain that we're not Pensacola. We're very different from Pensacola. I did live here in 1977, as Betty said, and I can remember that you had to go to Pensacola for everything. We crossed that bridge three or four times a day, you know, just uh, you know, round trip six times a day probably, because you had to go over there for everything. It's not that way anymore. I hardly ever cross the bridge. We're a very self-contained area now. Another thing that is a challenge to us is the internet. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, people say, well, I'm just gonna advertise on the internet. Um, and then we have a lot of people, this is probably my biggest challenge, is people that say, well, I'm not gonna advertise at all. I don't need to advertise. Well, we do not make uh, money on our subscriptions. I appreciate everyone who does subscribe, but we do not make a cent on the subscriptions. We have to have advertising or we cannot survive. So that's some of our challenges that we have. Um, back in uh, 2002, we decided that we had people saying, well, I don't need to advertise in Gulf Breeze because Gulf Breeze people all know me. They know my business and I've got plenty. And that has been helpful because it does reach uh, Pensacola, Pensacola Beach, Gulf Breeze, Tiger Point, Midway, and Navarre. And it does reach a lot of tourists, but we also have a lot of locals who pick it up as well. Uh, last year, the Pensacola News Journal, they just continued their weekender that they had. So now Splash is the only entertainment magazine in our area. We try to focus on shopping, dining, you know, attractions, the uh, nature, any outdoor activities that there's, there has going on, events and festivals, and uh, the reasons why we choose to live here. The, you know, the beauty, the nature, all that stuff. So, what would we, what would we do if we did not have Gulf Breeze News? Um, I think we'd lose a sense of community. I think we would lose a connection, definitely. I know we'd lose an affordable way to advertise. We would lose a tangible record of our history, which I brought some of those um, books. We have all of, all of our newspapers are archived in books, and I just brought two because they're too heavy to bring. Um, I think we'd lose a sense of pride, a sense of place, um, and I believe Gulf Breeze News is an advocate for our community as well. Now, of course, as I've said, you know, Gulf Breeze News does not have a lot of um, advertising, and you know, there's a lot of challenges we have. And newsprint costs, uh, I have been told, are going up 18% and oh. ink is going up 6% this year. So we are already very raised within margin, so it's really difficult uh, for us to say we're going to continue forever. You know, it's really hard to say that. So in conclusion, uh, you know, we do need your support. Um, we um, would love it if you guys would let all the businesses know that you read Gulf Breeze News and that you would appreciate them uh, advertising, or if they already advertise, tell them thank you for advertising, because that does give us, um, that's the only way we can make it happen. So, at this point, I just am done. Does anyone have any questions, or have I told you everything you need to know? One of the nice things, I think, that the Gulf Breeze News does is, uh, have, have any of you lost a 
relative recently and had to uh, and wanted to put the uh, put it in the Pensacola News Journal and gotten the bill for it. Yeah. But the uh, uh, news will print uh, an obituary. They have to they have to make sure that it's not a. Yeah. You know they've got to hear from. Uh, well, they're not free. They are not free, but they are uh, about a fraction of what they cost yeah, the fence collision. Yes. I mean, you're looking sometimes at nine hundred dollars. Yes, it's very expensive, and ours are roughly fifty to maybe two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, depending on the length. Depending on the length. Yes. Question: um, Would you clarify that if you have a paper subscription that gives you access to the internet version as well. That is correct. Because you were saying you had to start asking people to, you know, pay for the internet version, which is absolutely understandable. I mean, <laughs> I agree, but, and, and I like that fact that it does provide us both a print and an yes. internet version. I've had some people say, I'm not going to pay a dollar to, to read that article. Like, well, it's must not be worth it. Whatever, you know, anytime anything changes, you always have people pushing back. And like I said, I think a lot of people do think that the newspaper is a is a right, that they have a right to it. Um, I've had people tell me I should not be charging for the newspaper. You know, I just, I mean, people just don't have a concept of what goes into it. And that's why I'm kind of belaboring the point of how expensive everything is, but it is. But people are like, well, you should just do that for free as a community service. Well, I would love to, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I can't convince my vendors to do it for free. So that's difficult. Since you wrote, uh, since you started the newsletter, the newspaper, and you also uh, worked for the Sentinel, what do you see a difference in the two papers? Do they, do they serve the same purpose? Does the Sentinel serve the same purpose yet? Um, well, it's hard to say. You know, I was really a salesperson for the Sentinel. When I went to work there, my children were small and I wanted to just be in the same community and I loved working there so much. I do have a journalism degree, so um, it was something I've always liked being around newspapers, but I wasn't doing journalism. But when I first got there, um, they were really publishing a lot of recycled news from the Pensacola News Journal. And that was well, did you work terrible. for them when they were independent or did you at, or no. after? I only worked for them when they were owned by Gannett. Okay. Oh, right. mm -hmm. Now, when Dwayne and Dree owned it, I did live here uh, during that point, but I moved away. And I guess the News Journal owned it for 10 years, and I worked for them for five years. And I, I really loved it. I loved it. And that's one reason we started Gulf Breeze News, because when they said they were closing it, we just couldn't believe it. And actually, Dick Fulford came over from the Gulf Breeze Hospital and said, you cannot close this newspaper. You cannot close this newspaper. <laughs> And was, I was like, well, come here, let's talk outside, because I think we're going to start a newspaper. And they were our first advertiser. Yeah. And I love In fact, him. they guaranteed you, didn't they, some advertising? Oh, he wrote it on a yellow pad. Remember uh -huh. the yellow pads? Yes, he wrote it on there. We will, we will advertise every week. Yeah. And they did. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, but the news journal, um, we, we <coughs> take both papers, but it's gone up more than ten dollars a month and we just decided the Gulf Breeze News was sufficient. And Thank we, you. We, but it's it's like thirty six dollars a month now for the news yeah. journal. I got an annual bill and it was almost six hundred dollars for the Pensacola News Journal. It's like five hundred and something. I should have brought that bill. And I'm still deciding. I feel like it's important for me to read the Gulf the Pensacola News Journal. But, and my dog, I have a, dog, a lab that goes out and retrieves it every day, so that's her job. So I've thought about doing the online, but I thought, oh, poor Sadie. <laughs> She'll be so confused. Our dog used to do that, too. Yeah, but it, I've heard that you can call them and tell them that you're not paying it, and that they will reduce the price. Drastically. Right. And sometimes you have to go down there. You, I called an 800 number and a local number from off and on for a week and got put on hold in the states. So I finally went down to my office plan and they reduced it back to the original price. Oh, that's good. That is good. Well, I, I wonder how many people are going to do that, though. I, I think, I think a lot of people are just going to say, forget it. Yeah. And they're afraid of it. I, I think they should be afraid of it because even though, even if I'm considering, and I've been a daily newspaper subscriber since my you know my adult life, I, that it would be very difficult for me not to get the newspaper. 
But you have to say, is this worth it? Because it's a lot of stuff that um, you see on the news, TV news. It doesn't have a lot of Gulf Breeze news. They've really drastically cut their um, news, their reporters. They're not covering city council or things like that on a regular basis. They may call in and they don't, they don't attend those meetings. So they've definitely made a big change. Could you discuss at all perhaps one or two of the stories you enjoy being? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> well, I know, but perhaps some that made an impact or some that were sort of astounding to you. I'll tell you one story. Now, this is okay to, for me to tell because the person involved is no longer a member of this community, but um, there was a referendum coming up for Midway Fire to increase uh, their, their rates. And I called the chief down there, who was Stephen Demeter at the time, and uh, I said, hey, I, and everyone in the office was like, I don't want to do the story. I don't want to do the story because I'm afraid of him. <laughs> I said, I'll do it. I don't mind. I live in that district so I have nothing to you know obviously I want there to be a good fire department so I said I'll call him and he called me back and I remember this because I was outside walking in my backyard and he said you know Lisa that story's just not gonna look good <laughs> I don't think you should do it it's just not gonna look good I said well that's our job I can't not do it I have to tell what what it is so I started looking into it, and they were going to raise the rates on businesses quadruple, quadruple. So we said, is this correct? And we talked to some of the guys on the board, and they said, well, yeah, but it's worth it. It's worth it, because we're going to be a professional firefighting organization, and you know, we, we feel like it's worth it. So we talked to some of the insurance people and said, is this going to, are people going to get a big discount on their insurance if they raise all this up and uh, some of the ad advertisers at this time Angie Batten said no it's going to be minimal at best if you see any any reduction in your fire uh, protection or insurance so we looked at um, the fire department so there were some you know, there's some businesses in Gulf Breeze that also had businesses in Pace where they had a volunteer fire department and one of them was the movie theater there was a movie theater, almost the same footprint, owned by the same people in Pace and one in Gulf Breeze. In Pace, they were paying um, $1,000 a year for fire protection. In Gulf Breeze, they were already paying $4,000 a year. And under the referendum, they would have gone to $16,000 per year. Um, we looked at some Tom Thumbs who were also, in the, you know, there were Tom Thumbs here, Tom Thumbs there, same thing. Very, very, very expensive. And we thought, this is going to kill business in Gulf Breeze. Yeah. Um, so they <laughs> said I was lying, um, that I, they sent me, re I got letters from anonymous letters saying that I was a baby killer. <laughs> <laughs> because if I did not support this referendum, and I wasn't even supporting it or not supporting it, I was just telling what it was going to cost. Um, they said that that would cause wrecks on the, on the Highway 98 to not be adequately responded to. So therefore, a baby could die, therefore I would be a baby killer. <laughs> uh, they said that, what would you do if your house caught on fire? Now that gets your attention. That gets your attention. I'm like, uh. <laughs> Gosh, you know, um, it was scary. I have to say, I was scared for my life. I had, I had people. I was in Win Win Dixie one day, and I was just walking around. I didn't have a name tag on or anything, and I see these two guys that had uh, firefighter out um, t-shirts on, and I'm, and all of a sudden they turn and they look at me, both of them together. They know who I am. They th they know who I am, and they're they're looking at me like I'm the evil person. It was scary. It truly, truly was. Um, they said that what had happened was they had gotten a grant that would help them staff up. If they did not pass this referendum, they would have to repay that grant. So they, they said that our articles were causing all these people and their families to lose their jobs if it did not pass. So it was a very, very dark time. And the referendum did fail 81 percent to 19 percent 
And then I was really scared. <laughs> I was like, oh no, they're gonna come after me. But instead, I had people come to me and say, we know that we followed along behind a person who was telling us something that was not true. And we apologize. So that was very nice. That was very nice. So that was scary. Well, I, I have to tell you, I'm not really a, a, a heroine uh, or a, they're not my heroes. We had a fire down in, you know, where I lived before, my, my, where Bay Street. my home, uh, mm -hmm. Bay Street. We had 13 fire departments down there. Wow. And because the fire had come, probably they think maybe kids were out in the woods smoking, you know. Oops. And anyway, they didn't put out one drop of the fire. And the fire was coming, came across the street to my house. And the basic thing to put out the fire <coughs> in my house was because Tallahassee, Tallahassee sent down the plane that drops whatever that chemical it is. Well, I, I think they're great. The Midway Fire Department have no beef against Midway Fire Department. It was just at this particular time and that particular chief who was who resigned in disgrace later, which was nothing to do with any of this, but um, it was sort of karma. <laughs> Gosh, it all runs together. I'm very sorry. No, no, it was in the it was in the 2000s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to remember there was at one time there was an argument about they were responding to someone that they thought was out on the beach and it took them 45 minutes to get the boat. Oh. And it was somebody with a coronary incident. Oh. And I was like, it shouldn't take them, they shouldn't ever argue about district who. They were. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that yeah. wasn't too long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They should never argue about what district they're in. Well, this was simply about the money. And yeah. they had hired a firm outside the area to, to change this, and they said that they thought it would pass because businesses don't vote. Mm -hmm. That they, they were going to give a discount to the residents. But they were going to jack up the businesses so much. But they said we thought it would pass because businesses don't vote. <laughs> it failed. So that was good. Uh, yes. Hey, Bob. Well, I'd just like to say that community newspapers are very important. When we were in the drugstore business over here, we advertised weekly in the summer, and we got a lot of results from that. And it's really important to tell, particularly privately owned businesses, that you read it in the. That would help me so much. And the other thing is, what's Dwayne's last name? Cook. He rest in peace. Yeah, he was wonderful. Yes. And I can't help but say about Mr. Summerby and about Ruth Van Weasel. Oh, and Ruth. I did work with Ruth. What a wonderful person. May her memory be a blessing. Oh, my goodness. What a wonderful, wonderful person. I really enjoyed her so much. I feel so thankful that I was able to be there with her and so many wonderful people. In fact, I can tell you, everywhere I go, people say, I used to work for the Sentinel. <laughs> I think everyone in Gulf Breeze worked for the Sentinel. They went to <laughs> But it was a great newspaper, and I enjoyed working there very much. And, um, and this Were you there during the... When did it start, do you know? The Sentinel, uh, 1960. Wow. Mm -hmm. The year before incorporation. Yeah. Yes. And I was, uh, I was a baby. Yeah. And I was not even a baby, not even a baby yet. Were you there during the sightings? No, 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 I was not there. Do you know I made, uh, I was a guest speaker for Dr. Uh, J. Manuel and, and me. The, whenever I talked about Guppies and the Guppies News and, and so forth, one young, young man uh, said, "Isn't Guppies where we had the sightings?" And he, yeah, he was just real enthusiastic over that. He said, "I said yes," and he said, "Do you think it was real?" I said, "I have no idea. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows?" Thank you so much.